Wow. You know, uh, one of the great things of being here is that you really get a chance when you're recruiting one-on-one, -on -one, and one of the common denominator you see with all the winners and all the leaders and all your teammates is that we really attract great people to our business. One, one of the common denominator you'll see with all the leaders, we really get competitive, we get after it, but we have huge dreams, but when you cut them all, cut, cut them all up inside out, you see that we have some really, really good people in business with us. One of the things that, one of the things that uh, I dream about all the time and one of the things that I think about all the time is uh, I love my mom. I mean, I really sincere to the bottom of my heart love my mom, and I want to tell you why. Um, you know, 30, 37 years ago, my, my, mom, was in, my mom was in Haiti, and uh, uh, she was married, and uh, she was pregnant, and my father, you know, I never, I never got a chance to meet my dad. I mean, if I could have bumped into my dad right now, I wouldn't know who he is. And uh, my father uh, was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic. And uh, he took my mom through some tough times. And my mom decided, you know what, she was going to leave him, which was a tough thing, tough thing to do in a third world country. And when my mom's dad passed away, he left the one thing. He left her home with her and her brother. Well, the challenge was is that she was married and she could not get rid of that house unless he had his, his signature. And when she asked him for his signature so she could sell the house, he wouldn't do it. So my mom went to my, brother, my uncle and she told my uncle, if you give me a couple of hundred dollars, you can, have my, you can have the house. And my mom took a couple of hundred dollars and she bought a plane ticket to go to New York with a dream. And she had nothing. She, she only knew one person in New York, which was my auntie, Nic Nicole. She came to, to the convention a couple years ago. And my mom went to New York, and she left me. She left me in Haiti with my grandmother. And she told my grandmother, I'm going to go to New York, I'm going to work, and I'm going to save some money. And one day, I'm going to send for my son. And uh, uh, she came to New York, not knowing anyone, cleaning houses and working for other people and doing all these things. And for nine years, my mom didn't see me. And she dreamed every, every day for me to come to the United States. And I talked to my mom. I, call, I, I, was, I went to see my mom a couple months ago, and I asked her, and I, and I always have that conversation with her, and I, wanted, I always talk to her about, where did you get the strength to do something like that? And she said, she said, you know what? Since you were born, the only thing that I've ever focused on is that I wanted to have a better life for you. Every decision I made, I made it for you because I wanted you to have better. And I thought about, and I thought about that. And I, and I allow myself never, ever, ever, ever forget that. That the strength that it took my mom to do that. And now I look at my kids, Brianna and Justin. And I tell you, you guys, uh, everything I do, I keep my kids in mind. My kids, are, my kids are gonna be cash millionaires at the age of 18. I had, I had you know, this summer, single dad this summer. Uh, my kids were with me the entire summer. And I had such a great time teaching them different principles and teaching them different values and spending time with them. And Justin, uh, Justin, I work a lot with Justin with his attitude, right? I want him to have a positive attitude. So I constantly talking to him about his, his attitude. And, and it's, a, it's funny how kids get, get impacted by different things in society. We're in my car one day. And I, and I leaned over to him. I said, Justin, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he looked around. He says, you know what, Dad? I want to be a superstar. I go, really? What exactly? And I said, what exactly is a superstar? So I started thinking about that, right? I pondered, thought about it. And next day I said, well, what's a superstar, Justin? He's like, I don't know, but I just want to be a superstar. You know, I want to be on TV. I want to be on a superstar. So uh, one day uh, they were at the Boys and Girls Club playing. And uh, I asked him, I said, well, how was your day today, Justin? And he's like, oh, Dad, you know, I really had a bad day. Uh, you know, all this stuff. He was real negative about the entire day. And I asked him, I said, Justin, do you know the difference between, uh, do you know the difference between a superstar and just someone regular, uh, a regular person, an average person? And he says, no, Dad. I says, well, when, a, when an average person walks into a room, right, they adapt to the environment. Right? So if it's a negative environment or if it's whatever, they adapt to an environment. But when a superstar walks in a room, they set the environment. He says, really? 
I said, well, this is what should happen when a superstar walks in the Boys and Girls Club. When you walk in the Boys and Girls Club, everyone should be excited to see you. Oh my God, that's Justin. But like you set the tone because you've got a great attitude, you pumped out, you're excited, all the kids want to play with you and all this stuff, right? So, uh, so the next day, the next day, I, we, I pick him up and then we're going home. And he says to me, I said, what kind of day you had today, Justin? He goes, oh, I had a great day, Dad. And I says, really? How, why was your, I, he's like, oh man, I was so pumped up. I was a superstar all day. I was thinking about this and everyone was playing and all this stuff, right? So, so it was exciting to see his attitude change. And the next day, and the next day they had, uh, they had uh, someone come to the Boys and Girls Club and they had this big event, right? And all the kids, all the kids were going up. They, they, they had someone, I forgot who it was. It was one of these guys that ride the bikes and flip and do all this, all this stuff. And uh, um, they came down to Boys and Girls Club, did a whole, a whole thing. And all the kids were getting autographs. So he, we, we're in the car, we're talking. And he's like, Dad, you wouldn't believe this, da, 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 da. And he says, oh, I got this person's autograph. And I had to stop and I thought, I said, wait, wait a minute, Jay. I thought you wanted to be a superstar. And he says, well, yeah, I am a superstar. I says, well, superstar don't get autographs from other superstars, right? Why would you do that, right? And I started giving him examples, right? I said, you think dad would go ask another man, can I have your autograph? And he go, no. I get, why would you do that, right? So, so a couple of days later, they go down to Disneyland. And uh, there's this other famous guy there. And all the kids are getting autographs. And Justin's kind of like sitting in the background. And one of the boys came up to him and said, hey, how come you didn't get his autograph? He said, I'm a superstar. Superstars don't get autographs from other superstars. Right? So, so, so it's, really, it's really fun. It's really fun, you guys, when you get a chance. There's so many things you get a chance to learn in the business, and you have such an impact on your kids and your families and people in the business. So I'm having fun with the business. I'm having fun with the business right now. And, and I have huge dreams, you guys. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you, a lot of us say, you know, well, money's not everything, blah, 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 and all this thing. Let me tell you something. I, I, I'm going to make some big money in this thing. I want to be worth millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, billionaire style. And I, want, I mean, I want to throw parties where I'm, where I'm spending 600000 just for a party, right? I was, I was uh, reading this article on, on Puff Daddy, right? A couple years ago, he decided, he decided he's going to throw a party. So he threw a party in Morocco, right? He had 250 of his best friends from Trump and, you know, from everyone. Got an entire jet, flew all of his friends to Morocco to this huge place in Morocco. I mean, just partied for like 10 days straight. Right? right? And the party had cost him a couple of million dollars. And I was like, man, what would be, that would be a great thing to do, right? <laughs> stuff like, you guys, stuff like that. I like doing, I like doing stuff like that, right? I mean, I want to, I want to be able to do the, I want to be able to do those things. And you know what? I'm so grateful that I have a business opportunity that allows me to do that. Right? And you guys have the same opportunity to do, do those things. So I'm having a great time, you guys. This business is awesome. My dreams are coming true. You know, if I took a snapshot of my life today and I look back at 1998, I would look at myself and go, man, that is one lucky guy. All the things that he gets to do. So I'm having a great time, you guys. See you guys at the top. No time to yawn now, guys. Pay attention. I'm going to try to wow you for a few seconds here. Um, I actually had to really write down what I uh, said last night because I, I got pretty emotional. But I want to I share with you why I'm so inspired about this company and why I feel I'm really destined for greatness. Let me, let me uh, I took some notes here and I want to read these to you. Uh, this is my why because I really believe I want to be somebody. It says, I believe. Uh, I believe I'm destined for greatness. 
I was born in Mexico under very poor conditions. We lived in a home made of adobe. We didn't have any running water, very truly third world country conditions. At age two, my mom and dad migrated to the United States in search of hope and opportunity. So growing up as a kid, I didn't know my parents. My grandmother raised my sister and I. A few years later, my parents returned to Mexico only to bring us back to Pasadena, California, where we began a life there. I believe my future began there. I didn't speak a word of English, and I started school when I started school. Throughout my childhood, I didn't know my dad. All I knew was that he was an alcoholic, neglecting many of his parental roles. My mother was the biggest, is the biggest inspiration in my life. She was both my mother and my father. In 1990, my father passed away at age 48. Since I was a kid, all I experienced was financial problems between my mom and dad, always fighting about money. Christmas day, Christmases and birthdays would come and go without any gifts, without any celebrations. I remember wishing for a, a tiger shirt. You guys remember the little, little tiger shirts? Really wishing for one of those right there, only to find out that my mom and dad thought it was too expensive and we couldn't afford that. Today, because of this business, I have an opportunity to do some unimaginable ventures. Number one, more than anything, I want to have my brothers and my sisters completely be proud of me. I think more of you here in this crowd are proud of me today than my own family, because you're not, you're not appreciated in your own family until maybe you actually really, really make it. The other thing is, I get congratulated by all of my teammates and all the people in, our, in uh, the RBLC. But for my siblings to say, man, I'm proud of you, I'd give everything. I want to be a billionaire. I think it's time to have the Latino man set the example for all of us. I think too much of us think just, just because we come from a poor background that that's not for us. Well, I think that's wrong. I think if you have big dreams, you're willing to work hard, you have big aspirations, a company like WFG can completely deliver for you. Today, I'm a single dad. I have a little girl named Sophia Marie Haro. And my dream is to one day tell her, Mija, I want you to wish about anything and any and everything in, your, in this life, and your daddy's going to be able to say, you got it. I really want to take financial education to the Spanish-speaking community, especially the Mexicans. I think we have such a huge opportunity with so many people in this country who don't understand the concept of mutual fund who don't understand the concept of life insurance. The whole Sancho mentality is still ingrained in our mind. They think that if the wife dies, if the husband dies, the wife's gonna take the money and go spend it with another man. Well, bull, that's not the way it works and that's not the way we're supposed to continue to believe. I believe now we gotta, we gotta get to the point where our people understand that the way to get ahead is really learn to save and put away for the future. And if we don't do that, we're going to continue to be behind every other, third, uh, every other nationality out there, behind Caucasians, behind the blacks, behind the Asians, behind everyone else, because we feel that somehow they're smarter than us. I think we got to wake up now. Our society is filled with so many people that speak Spanish that are still in fear of putting away money in the bank. Some of you guys have clients like that. In closing, I want to just take a few moments here to really thank each and every one of you because you are my inspiration. The competition you provide for me by far outweighs anything else out there. The competition that some people in our office in Pomona provide for me, the competition across the country, the competition in San Diego and Northern California and across the United States makes me want to come out of my shell and says, you know what, I really got to be somebody. It's time for me to do it. There is no time to waste. I have, got to, I have got to change my ways that keep me from making progress. As I make progress in my life, I will show others, especially my teammates, that it can be made. And once it's made, I think there's nothing to hold us back. I want to take a few moments to really thank all of you guys. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Ed Milet, I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you.
I don't know about you, but these are good people to be in business with, aren't they? I, uh, in Tahiti, I got a chance to take a nice romantic uh, boat ride with uh, Guillermo. <laughs> we were paddling down the lagoon and going underneath the huts and looking up in people's living rooms. And it was, it was I like you too, Guillermo. You're not. I, uh, you know, these are, one of the things that I found out when I was in, uh, early on in this company was I, I began to learn um, that who you'll become over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is, it will be directly associated to the books you read, the tapes you listen to, but most importantly, the people that you associate with. And uh, since learning that, I've become very guarded in my associations. I, I uh, am very guarded in my spiritual life, who I associate with and who I listen to. I surround myself with leaders of the church. And in this business, I'm very guarded with who I associate with. I, I mean, I associate with a lot of people, but who I take counsel from and who I am influenced by. I'm very careful of those things. I, I look forward to raising my children around the type of people that you've heard tonight. You know, in Hawaii, I look forward to, I, you know, I, I happen to know Dan Charlet. He doesn't like the sun very much. He doesn't like water very much. So in Hawaii, he doesn't have a lot to do. So, you know, in Hawaii, I, I'm going to have my son there, man, and I'm going to have my son hanging out with Dan Charlier, learning how to be a man, how to, how to be a superstar, right? That's the type of guy I want my son hanging out with. I've got uh, two daughters. I promise you I'm going to be grabbing Jamie and having her spend some time with my 11-year-old. I, uh, I, uh, I'm going to surround my, my, my children my family will be raised around unbelievable people that will, that will teach them how to become leaders. I, uh, I, uh, I know that uh, my children will be raised in environments where they're going to hear messages from me, but they're going to hear the same messages from the people that I work with and the people that, that are my friends and the people that we're in business with. They, they're going to grow up in, in places and in ways, and I'm going to be able to control their environment that most kids never ha are able to. It amazes me that uh, you know, one of the things we do is we hire a teacher to actually come into our home and teach our children because I want to control the environment. I, I, I want to be a protector of my family. And uh, it's amazing I, uh, as other children come in because their friends come to us. I, I, I create an environment in a house where they want to be at our house. And, and they come in and just the way they talk, you can just tell. It's different. It, it's the, the, their parents are, don't understand the principles of influence and how, pe how their kids are being influenced. And it's just different. And uh, the, 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 we protect those things. I, I uh, you know, as I hear Brian Arnold talk about uh, uh, taking his daughter on dates, those are things that we do, and, you know, my daughter has the same ring, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that my kids are going to be raised with his kids, you know, and that our daughters are going to talk about, about uh, how they're going to live their lives, and, and uh, you know, a book I have my daughter reading right now talks about uh, as you... Uh, as you, as you get, to, and I actually had heard Rich Sully talk about this in the past. That's what's amazing about this company is you hear leaders talk about how they raise their kids, and you, just, you learn from them. You know, I, hope, I, I, heard, I know a lot of people, I heard, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to take my daughter on a date. Right? I mean, you learn how to do unbelievable things to take care of your family, not just how to build a business, just by being around unbelievable people. And uh, one, of the, one of the books I have my daughter reading, it talks about how you protect yourself as a young woman, as a young person in dating, how, you know, there's only two things that happen in a relationship as you're coming up. You either break up or you get married. That's it. That's in the story. And it talks about how you don't give, uh, give yourself away physically or emotionally to someone that you're not going to be married to because you belong to your future husband or your future wife. You don't give any part of yourself away. Even emotionally, you don't give it away. And... Uh, had I not been raised, if I, had I not grown up in this company, I don't know if I would have ever read books like that, if I would have ever thought about that kind of stuff. This company is a complete blessing, and it's because you get to be around people like this. It's a un this is a unique place to spend your life and your career. You got to go work somewhere. You got to earn a living somewhere. I got to tell you, there's no better place than a place like this. I, I, uh, a lot of you know that uh, you know you've heard my. If you're if you're in this meeting, you've been around long enough to know that my story it took me four and a half years, made no money. You know, the only thing I didn't quit. I remember, I remember one defining moment, and I, and I had kind of forgotten about it. As I look back at it, though, it, it scares me to almost think about it. It was about four and a half. It was actually it was about two months before I met Ed Milet. 
and uh, things weren't going well and, and uh, hadn't been going well for four and a half years. And um, my dad, who worked for the railroad, he made eighty, ninety thousand $90,000 a year working on the railroad. Now, I literally made less than $20,000 the previous four and a half years in this thing. So you can imagine that, that eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 looked pretty good. And he had uh, come to me, and, and, and uh, the railroad doesn't hire very often. And all of a sudden, they had an opening. As a matter of fact, in my entire career here up to that point, they, you know, they hadn't had any openings. And uh, he came to me and said, listen, you know, this thing isn't going too well for you. You're living in my home, and we were at the time. And, uh, you know, I think maybe you ought to consider taking a job with the railroad. I can get you in. And I got to tell you, that looked pretty attractive to go from, from really almost poverty in this business to, to instantly making eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year. And I remember sitting down with Tiffany and, and uh, very seriously thinking about doing this. And I knew if I did it, I was done in this business. It was done. Uh, the time that it would take, the type of lifetime, I mean, you're just, you're on the road all the time. I, I, uh, I had a great dad that I grew up with. But he was never around, not because he didn't want to. You know, I mean, in every other way, he was great, but he just wasn't there. He just couldn't be there. And, uh, and I thought about that.